In this video, we're going to think about evolution and understand that present day organisms have evolved from organisms in the past. We will define evolution. We will explain how fossils provide evidence for evolution, how we can use anatomical evidence to explain evolution and biogeographical evidence for evolution. Evolution is the gradual change in living organisms over long periods of time and it's caused by random mutations and natural selection working together. Uh, we've got a picture over here on the right of a fossil um, called an ammonite and when you look at the fossil evidence you see a gradual change from simple through to more complex over long periods of time. So there are fossil evidence, that's one piece of evidence we're going to look at, um, comparing the anatomy. So if we think about vertebrates, things with backbones, we all have similar bone structures and they've evolved for different functions. Biogeography is the distribution of living things, showing that they evolved from a common ancestor in one place and then they spread out from that spot. And there are two pieces of evidence here which we will consider in another video and that is natural selection in action um, of small observable changes and looking at genetic analysis. So fossils. Fossil is a rock um, and it's when an organism or a part of an organism has been mineralized. So it turned into rock and that preserves it. Um, it could also be a trace of the living organism, for example, um, a footprint or some feces. Uh, we can work out how old a fossil is by either comparing it to the rock layers around it, and that's called relative dating, or we can look at the radioactive elements in the fossil or in the rock, and that's, um, that's absolute dating. So that's when we find out the actual age, not compared to other things, but of the thing itself. And as we saw with the ammonite fossil, older fossils tend to be simpler than more recent fossils of the same thing. Uh, this picture over on the right is um, dinosaur footprints from Western Australia. Uh, fossils aren't always great um, because there is a problem if we don't find all the fossils we need to make our argument for evolution. So in this picture we've got some fossils that are related to us. So we are over here on the right at the top, so Homo sapiens. And here are a whole lot of different fossilized skulls that have been found over millions of years and it's it's useful and we can start drawing some conclusions but there are always gaps in the fossil record because we don't find everything fossilized that we need to find to um, back up any theories so there are some limitations with just using one piece of evidence for arguing about evolution that's why we look at more than one type of evidence so let's have a look at anatomical evidence. And if we think about vertebrates, that's things like us, things with a backbone, we have the same overall pattern in the bones of our limbs, so our arms and our legs. And these bones have changed over time in different vertebrates to be used for different purposes. And this supports the evidence, uh, sorry, this evidence supports the hypothesis that there was a common ancestor of all vertebrates. So in the middle, here is the picture of our limb. It's called a pentadactyl limb because it's got five pentadactyl fingers or digits. And you can see one bone, like in the upper arm, then two bones in your forearm, and then wrist bones, and then five digits with your bones of your digits. And if you look at the different pictures around here, we've got a bat. The bat's arm has been adapted. You can actually see long, thin fingers to hold out the membrane of the wing so that the bat uses its limbs for flying. The dolphin has a sturdy flipper, so it uses its limbs for swimming. Um, an anteater is going to tear into ant nests, so it has um, a much sturdier limb with a very pronounced middle finger for tearing. The mole um, has a spade-shaped hand and fairly stout limbs for digging. 
Uh, the horse has lost all its finger structure, really, and has very elongated limbs so that it can run on the grassy savannas. And a pig also needs to move around, but it doesn't tend to run, so its leg is shorter and stouter because it's walking. And a monkey has a very um, human-like hand, actually, because it uses its hand for um, grasping and manipulating food in a similar way that we do. So same underlying bone structure, but but the actual function and the pattern of the, the oh sorry, the length of the different bones is different and the ratio of the different lengths is different depending on what the animal um, has evolved to use their limb for. And the last piece of evidence we'll consider today is biogeography evidence. So this is the distribution of living things um, that show that they evolved from a common ancestor in one place and then spread out. So the common ancestor in one place. And a good example of this is oceanic islands. And Galapagos is our famous example because that's where Darwin went and collected a lot of his evidence. And the Galapagos Islands here, they are off the coast of Ecuador and they're quite a long way off the coast and Darwin came up with his ideas based on the idea, based on the thought that the original animals on the Galapagos must have come from the mainland but once they're separated from the mainland there are different changes that are taking place in, on the islands compared to the mainland and his famous example was the finches. So there was an original arrival of finches on the Galapagos Islands and then different changes that were happening inside the finches just by random mutation meant that some were adapted better for certain food groups and others for other food types. And eventually you ended up with a whole range of finches that could make use of multiple different food sources on the Galapagos Islands. Um, slightly closer to home, we have some biogeographical bio evidence when we look at marsupials. So marsupials are mammals with pouches, and there's one other place where you find mammals with pouches, and that is South America. And the New World or South American uh, marsupials are closely related to the Australian marsupials, but how could they have got there? Because South America is a long way away. Well, plate tectonics we know about, um, and once upon a time, Australia and South America were actually joined together. So there was a common ancestor of mar all marsupials that existed on that joined up landmass. And when the plate tectonics um, moved, um, Australia separated from South America, that common ancestor moved as well. And then um, changes accumulated that were different in the different continents which resulted in the different species found on those different continents. Um, poor Darwin didn't know about plate tectonic theory when he was putting together his ideas uh, because that wasn't really proposed until the 1900s. So there we have three different uh, pieces of evidence uh, for evolution.